Hi everyone and welcome to my Beta 95X version 3 review by Beta FPV. Let's start by seeing what's in the box. You've got the quad obviously, an action cam power lead adapter, which I'll explain what that's for in a bit. You also have the USB-C and micro USB L adapters, as the ports on this quad are very tricky to get to and you'll need these. As you can see here, you have the USB-C port for the Vista unit for activation, updates and so on. And on the other side, you've got the micro USB for beta flight and everything else. You also get spare sponge for the outside of the ducts and some smear props and screws. It comes with red on there and then you've got a black spare one. The quad itself this time round has been completely redesigned in the version 3, whereas the V2 was more of a converted V1. The one piece body and frame is made of injection molded plastic. And as you can see, it has been well designed and has all the components nicely tucked away. With this version, you no longer have cables being in the way of potential harm. And each component has been housed nicely. As an example, the VTX at the back is nicely covered up and even has some small guards underneath. Right at the back, you have a custom 5.8 GHz LHCP antenna for the video transmission. The motors this time are 1106 3800 kV with 5 blade props instead of the 3, which makes it a little bit quieter. This being the HD version has the Cadex Nebula system with the V2 Nebula camera, which is a vast improvement over the V1. I opted for the Crossfire Nano receiver on this, which is just under here as you can see. It weighs just shy of 120 grams without the battery and the recommended battery is a 4S 450 milliamp, which was getting me on average about three minutes. As most people buying this would probably want to shoot some high res footage, you also get the power cable and the mount pre-installed for the SMO 4K camera, which Beta FPV has made in collaboration with Insta360, which makes it super easy just to pop it on and power it up. As this review is just for the quad, I won't get into the SMO camera but I'll be doing a separate video for that footage. All in all, the V3 is a vast improvement and flies pretty well. The power is more than enough, but at a medium level of power usage, you'll get around three minutes of flight time. And that's without the SMO camera, maybe two and a half minutes with the extra 30 grams. The motors are good and give power as needed. Depending on what type of flying you do and the flight mode you use, you may be able to make the flight characteristics a little bit sharper specifically the tune on acro mode. It's more than capable than previous versions at doing some acro without washout. My biggest issue with this quad is the FPV camera. Although it's positioned well and it is a good camera, it does get some jello as you'll see in the video coming up. It's not touching at the top or the bottom, but I think it's just because it's directly on the main body with no dampening of any sort. I tried it at various angles but it made no difference. I'll hopefully try some sort of dampening and if successful, I'll post it up here. The day I flew this, it was really cold here and slightly windy, which didn't help. If you wanna shoot some nice cinematic style videos, the V3 makes a perfect partner for the SMO camera or the naked GoPro style of cameras. It handles the weight and can fly pretty well. Not sure it's the best in this size and class of quad though, there are loads of these pusher cine whoops popping up. My next review is going to be of the C85 pusher quad from iFlight. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. The two are very similar and I'll be comparing them once I've done some proper tests with the C85. Here's the video coming up and I'd really appreciate if you would subscribe to my channel. And thanks for watching.